welcome to lecture number 34 in load flow analysis in this lecture we are going to study the bus or bus bar so any arrangement of conductor that serve as a common connection for the conductors of two or more circuit is known as a bus or a bus bar buses are meeting point of various components so what are the components components can be transformer you can have a generator you have a load and different components so generator will feed energy to buses and load will draw energy from buses so in any bus generator are the one which can feed energy and load are the one which will draw the energy from buses in the network of a power system the buses become the nodes so in circuit we have seen the nodes so in power system problem the buses will become the node so voltage can be specified for each bus so for each bus a definite amount of voltage will be specified each bus in a power system is associated with four quantities so four quantities are there which are associated with each bus in a power system the real and the reactive power magnitude and phase angle of the voltage so these four quantities real power reactive power magnitude of the voltage and phase angle are the four quantities that will be given across each bus two quantities are specified and other two have to be determined so only two quantities will be specified and other two will be determined now what is the bus classification so generally the buses will be classified as load bus voltage control bus slack or swing bus so generally bus will be three types load bus voltage control bus slack bus or swing bus voltage control bus are known as the generator buses and load buses are known as the uh, load bus are known as the pq bus and generator bus are known as the pv bus or the voltage control bus the sling the slack or swing buses are basically the reference bus so that we are going to look so here out of the four quantities two will be specified and two have to be determined so what two quantities will be specified and what two quantities will be determined corresponding to three buses one two and three so let us look so in load bus which is known as the pq bus load bus is known as the pq bus so real power and reactive power of the buses will be specified and the voltage magnitude and phase angle will have to be determined generator bus is known as the pv bus so the real power and magnitude of voltage will be specified the reactive power and the phase angle of the voltage has to be determined slack bus is a reference bus so the magnitude of the voltage and phase angle of the voltage will be specified and the real and reactive power of the slack bus has to be determined so this has to be kept in mind in order to solve any load flow problem so basically three type of buses are there so load bus is known as the pq bus generator bus is the voltage control bus which is the pv bus slack or reference bus is basically the reference bus so for load flow studies it is assumed that loads are constant and they are defined by the real and reactive power consumption so any load will be determined in terms of p and q p is the real power and q is the reactive power it is further assumed that the generator terminal voltage are tightly regulated and therefore are constant. So wherever you will be having a generator, its voltage will be constant. The main objective of the load flow is to find the voltage magnitude of each bus and its angle when the power generated and load are pre-specified. So this is the main objective. You have to determine the voltage magnitude and the phase angle delta. Now, what is a load bus? Load bus is known as the PQ bus. So, no generators are connected. So, whenever there will be a load bus, no generators will be connected. Hence, the generated real power PG and reactive power are taken to be zero. So, here in this case, since generators are not involved, your P and Q will be zero. 
required to specify only minus PL and minus QL. The negative sign accommodates for the power flowing out of the bus. So if this is a bus, the generator will be specifying the power, giving the power and load will be taking the power. Since we are talking about the load bus, you will not have a generator component and you will have minus PL and minus QL because the power is flowing out of the buses. The objective of the load flow is to find the bus voltage and its angle as we have seen. Generator or voltage control bus which is a PV bus, bus where generators are connected. So wherever the generator is connected, it is known as the voltage control bus, generator bus or PV bus. Power generation is controlled through a prime mover while the terminal voltage is controlled through the generator excitation. So this is the phenomena by which the power will be controlled. Next, keeping the input power constant through the turbine governor control and keeping the bus voltage constant using automatic voltage regulator, we can specify constant PG and voltage. So as we know that in a PV bus, we have to specify the real power and the magnitude of the voltage. The magnitude of the voltage will have to be constant because wherever there is a generator, we know that the voltage is constant. QG supplied by the generator depend on the system configuration and cannot be specified in advance. We know that the reactive power depends upon the system configuration and it will be not specified in advance. However, it has to be calculated. Furthermore, we have to find the unknown angle delta of the bus voltage. So here we have been given the magnitude of the voltage, but delta is not given. So we have to determine that. The third type of bus that we have is known as the slack bus, swing bus or reference bus. So here voltage and angle of the bus is given. This is due to balance the active and reactive power in the system. Since it is a reference bus, it will be balancing the active and reactive power in the system. It will provide or absorb the real and reactive power to and from the transmission line to provide for the losses since these variables are unknown until the final solution is established. So when we obtain the final solution, we will be obtaining the voltage across each bus, the phase angle across each bus and how much power loss is there throughout the transmission line in the feeder. So it serves as an angular reference for all other buses in the system which is set to be zero. So in this case, this has to be referenced so the angle will be specified as zero for a reference bus and the voltage magnitude will be one per unit. So the voltage magnitude will be 1 per unit. It means the voltage of a slack or reference bus will be 1 angle 0 and this is in per unit. If a slack bus is not specified, then a generator bus with maximum real power acts as the slack bus. So this point has to be noted. Whenever a slack bus is not specified in the question, then you can take a generator bus with the maximum real power as the slack bus. Required to account for the line losses and serve as a generator injecting real power in the system. Since it is a generator bus, it will be injecting the real power. So generator bus with the maximum real power will be taken as the slack bus. Now the question is why we need a slack bus? or why generator bus is chosen as slack bus. So basically power system will have only two buses. One is a load bus and other is generator bus. In these buses power injected by generator and power drawn by load are specified. We have seen that if there is a bus then the generator will give the power and load will take the power. Then the power loss in transmission line are not accounted. So, the total complex power loss in transmission line, the loss is basically the power complex power of the generator minus the power of the load. So, sum of complex power of generator minus sum of complex power of load will give you the total or complex power in the transmission line, that is the loss in the transmission line. 
Loss can be estimated only if the real power and reactive power of all the buses are known. So the finally we can determine the loss when all the real power and reactive power of all the buses are known to us. Power will be known only after the load flow solutions are obtained. So once we have completed the load flow analysis, then only the loss will be determined. Since the loss of a line depends on the line current, so when the loss is basically I square R. So it will depend upon the line current, which in turn depends on the magnitude and angle of the voltage of the two buses connected to the line. So if there are two buses, bus number one and bus number two, and this is connected with a line, then the current flowing in the line will be dependent on the voltage of bus number between the two buses V1 and V2. It is rather difficult to estimate the loss without calculating the voltage and angle. So once we calculate the voltage of the buses with its angle, then only we can calculate the current and then only we can calculate the loss. So for this reason, a generator bus is usually chosen as slack bus without specifying its real power. So whenever you do not have any slack bus, then we choose a generator bus to be a slack bus without specifying its real power. It is assumed that generator connected to this bus will supply the balance of the real power required and the line losses. So the generator will be supplying the balance power. So this complete the specification of the bus. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.